Now, trying to look at how we can be able to use anticoagulants to treat acute coronary syndrome. Using anticoagulants to treat anticoronary syndrome. So, uh, before us here is what examples of anticoagulants. And if I were actually, what is an anticoagulant? An anticoagulant is basically um, a drug. And this drug will basically what? How will I put it? This drug will re. Okay. Anticoagulant, that means what? It is against coagulation. You get? So, the drug is against your blood forming clots. Do you understand? So for patients that have this, um, what do they call it? For patients that have this, um, all these heart problems, there's a risk that, okay, all of a sudden their blood can start clotting. Do you understand? So you want to now prevent it or treat it. All right. So examples of anticoagulants include warfarin, heparin, apixaban, rivarosaban, edozaban, that bigger trend, okay? Those are the examples. So let's have the overview so that anticoagulants are commonly used to treat what? Acute coronary syndrome. Um, acute coronary syndrome include conditions such as well, myocardial infarction, which is heart attack, or stable angina, right? And the goal of anticoagulant therapy is to what? Prevent blood clots, which is also known as well, thrombus formation. It, it, you can also be doing this to reduce the thrombus size, but you can do this to what? Prevent a clot propagation again come here, let me see something okay so um you are also doing this to reduce the risk of what ischemic events like heart attack strokes and the rest okay so common anticoagulants using what um acute coronary syndrome include Heparin, okay, Fondaparinox, Bivali Rudin, and Nozaparin, and Deltaparin, okay, these are the common anticoagulants used in this. What are the benefits of this anticoagulant therapy? Um, there's reduced risk of what death and myocardial infarction, there's reduced risk of what stroke and systemic embolism, there's reduced risk of what reinfarction. That's basically there's reduced risk of the disease condition coming over again, right? And there's improved outcomes in patients who are undergoing what percutaneous coronary intervention. However, anticoagulant therapy also carries risks so, such as what bleeding complication, hemorrhage, thrombocytopenia. That's reduced levels of what uh, thrombocytes. Okay. So to minimize risks, careful patient selection is needed. Dosing and monitoring are essential. Okay. The duration of the anticoagulant therapy in this acute coronary syndrome include it typically lasts for like 48 to 78 hours, right? It may be extended, and this is based on the individual patient needs and clinical judgment. Okay, so this is just it about using anticoagulants to treat this acute coronary syndrome.